Hari Om, the part three of Mahabharata story today. And I think I'll begin with the chapter one of Bhagavad Gita also today. The first part I was talking about the Kauravas and Pandavas. The part two I talked about Sri Krishna. And I'm going to combine this. And I told you the relationship between the Kauravas and Pandavas and also the relationship between Pandavas and Sri Krishna. So, Kaurav and Pandav, they are cousins. Shri Krishna is a cousin of Pandavas. Now, all these little kids have grown up and they have become adults. In the Hastinapur kingdom, the Kuru dynasty, the Kauravas tried to kill Pandavas in that house of wax but that attempt was unsuccessful and Pandavas survived. When the news of the burning of the house came, the, the blind representative king Dhritarashtra in Hari appointed his son Duryodhan as the prince in place of Yudhishthir, the elder eldest of the Pandavas. But when the Pandavas came back to Hastinapur, it was a very tricky situation as to what to do. Technically, it was very clear the truth was with Pandavas, so the prince, the post of the prince should have been handed over to Yudhishthir again. But the blind representative king Dhritarashtra, his greed and his blind love to his son, instead of punishing the son for the conspiracy, he gifted his son the same post of prince and he refused to remove him from that post. But it was injustice to Pandavas. All the council of ministers there, the Bhishma, the great grandfather, who loved both equally because they were his grand kids. So he loved both. And then the prime minister, his name was Vidur, they mounted pressure on the king. And then the king took a very interesting decision. And the decision was again an injustice to Pandavas. And the decision was, let's divide the kingdom into two halves. The prosperous part, the rich area of the kingdom, the, king, uh, the capital Hastinapur, and the surrounding areas will remain with the Prince Duryodhan and the desert and forest which had nothing in it was given to Pandavas and Yudhishthir was made Prince of that. Now naturally the Pandavas, the other four got angry. They said this is injustice. But that's when Sri Krishna entered. Pandavas came to know about him he was their cousin and all that. And when he came in contact with these Pandavas, he certainly exert, exerted his influence. And naturally Pandavas got attracted to him. And he, very, in very short time, he became their beloved friend. He became their mentor. Though Krishna was younger than Yudhishthir, Krishna was the same age of Arjun. Arjun was the number three Pandav. So, he's the same age as Arjun. But Krishna's knowledge, Krishna's name in India at that time, the respect that he commanded because of what he did from childhood, because of the visionary leadership he displayed, because of unselfish acts he did in his life, because of the support that he provided to the weaker sections in his kingdom, weaker sections of the society in his kingdom, there was a lot of respect for him in the common people and also in the royal families and kings and all of them. So naturally Pandavas got very close to Sri Krishna in a very short period of time. And when this decision of division of kingdom 
was taken by the king. It was Sri Krishna who convinced Pandavas to take up that half of the kingdom. And the reasoning he gave to Pandavas was very, very nice and very interesting. He said to Pandavas, look, this kingdom, there's nothing new you can do in it. But you have got a barren piece of land where you can plan everything from zero. Exactly what you want to create, you can do that in this kingdom. You can take support of all the best people. People in this kingdom of Hastinapur and people in other kingdoms, they also love you. So good people will certainly follow you. And he prepared Pandavas, he boosted their morale. And then Pandavas started building their new kingdom. The Kauravas were happy that they got the best kingdom and the worst part of the kingdom was given to Pandavas. Though rightfully, the whole kingdom was to be ruled by Pandavas. But anyway, in few years' time, the Pandavas built a very beautiful place. The place that was given to them, the name of that place was Khandavana. But they made that Khandavana into a very beautiful kingdom called Indraprastha. And that kingdom was so beautiful. So many people from different, different, different parts came there and settled. So many businesses started prospering there because the Pandavas established rule of law, which is most important. A rule of law, equal opportunity for everyone, the equality concept, the safety for the weakest, the care for the weakest. These are all core ideas of any prosperous place. And that's exactly what Pandavas did. They used their, all their strength to bring these beautiful values in their kingdom. And naturally, in few years' time, that kingdom became something like a you know, most admired kingdom in India. And then what happened was very interesting. Kauravas realized that this kingdom has become so much better than the Hastinapur, the original kingdom itself. So they wanted that kingdom. So Duryodhan started planning how to take this kingdom. But by that time, uh, the Pandavas, in, with the advice of Sri Krishna, they had become a very formidable force in India. So if Kauravas wanted that kingdom, war was not an option because it was too powerful a kingdom. And Pandavas also were very powerful warriors. So they had a big army also. Sri Krishna was supporting them. So it was very difficult for Kauravas. So what they did, they started finding the weaknesses which they can exploit to get this kingdom without fighting a war. They came up with a very interesting plan. And the plan was this Yudhishthir, the king Yudhishthir, he had a weakness. And his weakness was he used to play the game of dice, you know, kind of casino game. <laughs> and he loved that game. So they focused on that weakness. Said, can we exploit this? And in that game, can we get the kingdom and everything that we want? It's an interesting plot. Uh, the Duryodhan, he had an uncle. His name was Shakuni. And that guy was the brain behind this plot. So, they started designing that, how we can cheat Pandavas. And then they set up a game where everything was manipulated. You see in all these movies, no, where people manipulate this uh, casino games. <laughs> so like that they did. And uh, they invited Pandavas, they said, now you have a good kingdom, now everything is good between us. So let's 
you sh- we invite you to come back to this kingdom for few days as holidays uh, family reunion and all of that it was all fake but they did it and pandavas fell for it pandavas thought that oh why not after all they are our cousins and probably they have forgotten all of this and we ha- we should forgive them for their mistakes and forget it so they all came pandavas came the pandavas interestingly five of them were married to one woman it's a little it's a little uh, interesting situation for us to imagine in our society today but in the past in india one king had many queens in pandavas case five princes or one king and four princes five brothers had one wife don't ask me more <laughs> <laughs> so they all came and they all thought that yes we are meeting great grandfather bhishma then the blind king uncle he was their uncle and then the the auntie and uh, the prime minister vidur and they also had their guru see pandavas and kauravas learned from the same guru his name was dronacharya and he was still employed by the hastinapur kingdom so he was working with the kingdom and this guru was the one who loved arjuna the most though the guru was for all 100 plus 5 his most favorite disciple was arjun he taught arjuna everything that he knew so arjuna for arjuna the closest people in that kingdom were his great great grandfather that is bhishma who loved him like a father because when arjuna was young very young his father died the king pandu he died when arjuna was maybe few years 7 5 6 7 years old and then the person who loved him like a father was bhishma bhishma understood that these five don't have a father so he need to give that love to these five so arjuna had this attachment with his guru and with his great grandfather so they all came then this duryodhan the kauravas the the first kaurav and his uncle shakuni and his brother dushasan they all were the leading role they played leading roles in that game of cheating and they brought this Dur- uh, yudhishthir and the four pandavas into that game and they started playing like a fun but it continued for few days but you know what happens in a game of uh, dice like this when you go to a casino no people lose more and more money the more you lose the more you bring in because you want to win back that money because you think you have to get back what you lost and that's exactly what happened he kept losing he kept losing he kept losing and a point came where he had to commit all the wealth of his kingdom to get back what he lost then he lost that also and then to get that back he had to put the kingdom and he lost that also everything he lost in the game and then something unimaginable that this kauravas did and that started that laid the foundation of the war the foundation of the war was since the childhood of pandavas but this became a flash point and the kauravas the duryodhan and dushasan these two they said now you put yourself as our slaves bet your freedom and play the game and this yudhishthir the king had no other way so he put it it was his stupidity and they lost the freedom the moment they lost the freedom they lost that game duryodhan and dushasan they pulled the wife of pandavas from her bedroom and they dragged her naked in that uh palace where the parliament or whatever you say court and that was a insult to the queen and she was their cousin's wife but they became so arrogant that they have won the kingdom they have made these five pandavas as their slaves and it turned really bad there 
Shri Krishna was of course not there that time because he was not always with them. He had his own kingdom to look after. And when this was happening, no one interfered. Bhishma was quiet. Dronacharya, the guru of Arjuna, was quiet. The blind king was quiet. The mother of Kauravas, Gandhari, she was the devotee of Shiva. So she was a spiritual person. She was quiet. No one spoke anything. No one spoke in favor of that woman who lost her dignity there for no fault of hers. That time, the only one who spoke was the Prime Minister, Vidur, and he made everyone aware what is happening. So then the king interfered and he said, okay, whatever has happened, happened. Now these Pandavas have lost. So the thing is, we'll send them into forest for 12 years so that they are away from you guys. And when they come back, we should give their kingdom back. That was the deal settled. Finally, so Pandavas left, humiliated, they left without their kingdom, they left without any money, they left without any power, they left with a queen that they loved, with, with their, the wife that they loved so much, humiliated, she could not handle that. Humiliation, insult and they went into the forest. And then Shri Krishna went to meet them. And they expressed this dissatisfaction and anger and all of that. But Shri Krishna said, look, you guys are also responsible for what has happened. What has happened is certainly not good. What has happened is certainly showing the values of the society are going down. Look, they are the they are the people who are in power. And if the kings and people who are in power abuse the power, the most vulnerable are the women. The most vulnerable are the weaker sections in the society. And there is no rule of law. What exists there is the rule of desires and power hunger. And this is not a good direction for our society. This is going to destroy our civilization if this goes on like this. And he told Pandavas that you are also responsible. You shouldn't be playing these games. That also is a desire, a form of desire and a form of ego. Anyway, it was decided that 12 years they will be in forest and after 12 years they'll come back and they'll get their kingdom back. So Shri Krishna said that forget it, use these 12 years to practice your yoga, practice meditations, practice austerities, purify yourself, understand more values, understand how to rule the kingdom, how to make yourself a better human being, spiritually evolve yourself and after 12 years you can go back. That was how this 12 year period was settled. 12 years were over. After 12 years, Pandavas came back. When Pandavas came back, they should have got their kingdom back. But that time, in those 12 years, the Kauravas became very powerful because they had no opposition. They had defeated Pandavas in a game of dice. So there was no one comparable to Kauravas in the entire state of India. And that made them very arrogant. The there was no rule of law there. It was all about power game. It was all about abuse of power. And they rejected the right of Pandavas. And they said, that kingdom was never yours. You are all monks now. Look at you. And monks don't need to have any kingdom. Go away. No kingdom for you. And that put the starting, that, that started the idea of war in the mind of Pandavas. 
they asked for Shri Krishna's advice. Shri Krishna said, war is never a solution. War is never something that we should go for because it destroys civilizations. It destroys life as a whole. It destroys social structures. It destroys the wealth. It destroys the prosperity. It destroys the families. Destroys life of people. Young kids are left without parents. Women are left without their partners. That time the men used to fight the wars. Women did not fight the wars. So Sri Krishna said that war cannot be a solution. If Pandavas, if five of you agree, I will go to the king. Dhritarashtra and his son Duryodhan and I will convince them that if they can give you five small plots on the land then I will promise on your behalf that you will not fight the war and Pandavas agreed to that they said yes we understand what you are saying because all these 12 years of yoga practice had made Pandavas more humble and compassionate, though they had their power, though they were the warriors, their understanding of yoga philosophy had broadened. So they, they agreed to Sri Krishna's proposal and they said, we empower you to take decision on our behalf, Sri Krishna. Thank you so much. Please go and present this peace deal to them. Sri Krishna said, that's exactly what I expected from you. So he went there to talk to Kauravas, Duryodhan and Dushasan and the blind king, Dhritarashtra, the Bhishma, the great old man. So he went there and you know what happened? This was the last attempt. Duryodhan was so arrogant that he tried to arrest Sri Krishna. Now, Sri Krishna had no role in any of it. But the power arrogance is so blinding that for no reason Sri Krishna was humiliated. But of course, they could not arrest Sri Krishna. He left. He left without anyone actually coming close to him because of whatever energies he had, whatever his aura was. Even Bhishma and Dronacharya warned Duryodhan, what are you doing? Idiot! He is a messenger of peace. He is not here to fight the war. And is one of the most respected names in India. Why you are becoming enemy with him? But Duryodhan was blinded by power. If he could abuse the queen Draupadi and drag her naked in front of the whole court, Shri Krishna was similar for him. And that was the starting of war. There was no other choice but war. Because the last statement that Duryodhan said to Sri Krishna is, go tell your cousins Pandavas, if they want to live, if they want to stay alive, let them fight. That was the ultimate ego. I am the best warrior. I am the most powerful king. I can do anything that I want. No one can touch me. And the war preparation started. The Pandavas started communicating with different kings. The Kauravas started communicating with different kingdoms and asking for support because it was not just an easy war. It was a power game for Kauravas and Pandavas. For Pandavas, it was more of gaining their rightful kingdom back. It was more of living up to their name that they can protect their dignity. They can protect the dignity of their women. They can protect their values that they build their kingdom around. For Pandavas, it was more of a dharma. It was more of a right thing to do. And for Kauravas, it was more of a power abuse. So, the foundation of the war was set both parties collected a lot of support, but still Kauravas had more. Kauravas had probably 
there's about 18 aukshani uh, soldiers i don't know what is aukshani maybe millions you can say roughly so 13 million soldiers were fighting from kaurava side and 5 million were fighting from pandava side so that is the setup of war so the two armies come face to face with each other now krishna what is krishna's role arjuna asked krishna will you please be on our side shri krishna said it's your war i'm not going to fight the war it's not my war then arjuna said but i will not do anything without you shri krishna said okay then i'll be your chariot driver i won't fight the war i won't raise a weapon i won't have any weapon in my arms but i will just ride your chariot and if you ask me something i will answer your questions so my role is limited to answering your questions arjuna was super happy with shri krishna's decision so he became arjuna uh, shri krishna became arjuna's chariot driver so when the two armies came in in front of each other arjuna was leading because he was one of the most important warriors and captains for the pandava army and shri krishna was his chariot driver and this is the starting point of bhagavad gita so i'm going to stop here today and i'll continue with the first chapter tomorrow first chapter of bhagavad gita and one by one i will introduce to you to the concepts of bhagavad gita more than the chapters present concepts so i'm going to stop here hari om